We're reviewing the March of the Machines Commander Precons from worst to best. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, joined by Amber, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. We have a Patreon. On that Patreon is some bloopers and stuff. You can only access it by joining the other tiers, which gives you other merch anyway, and it's a great way to support us directly so that we can continue to eat food as we love to do every single day. Yes, if you would like to join us in laughing as we try and make a very, very silly video, go join our Patreon. Tiger Smith already did it. Thank you, Tiger Smith. Very scary name. They're on top of it. And then very normal name. Tiger is like, and Tiger's like, hey, that's scary. And then Smith is a last name. Unless, of course, he's someone who smiths tigers, in which he would be like, uh, what, a, sh- what, a blacksmith. So, okay, I've gone too far on the Smith thing. <laughs> cool Stuff Inc. sponsors this channel. They're amazing. They have all of your singles needs. They have all of your sealed needs. They have all of your accessory needs for Magic the Gathering. Use code NERDS. And when you use code NERDS, you will get 5% off any order and you'll be supporting the NERDS by using code NERDS. All of that is completely true. Cool stuff, Inc. is awesome. You can also support us by using our EU and US links to buy Dragon Shields. They have the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And we absolutely love them. We've been using my deck for 10 plus years. I can't stop telling you, honestly, it is unbelievable just how much better they are than all the competition. Redacted Sleeve sucks. Redacted Sleeve sucks. Also and, sucks, yeah. And Redacted Sleeve sucks. Terrible. Just use Dragon Shields. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. Beezy, why don't you tell everyone what we're doing today? Well, there are five March of the Machine pre-cons, and we're going over them from worst to best. And this is basically your full pre-con breakdown. We're talking about the face commander, the deck's game plan, how good the deck is in general, the best reprints, the new cards, five budget ads, five non-budget ads, and then cards we'd recommend cutting from the deck. Yes, so these pre-cons, this is essentially Commander 2023. This is what used to be Commander 2023, is now the mom pre-cons, because they now have just started pairing these up with sets. Pretty simple. Uh, these decks are actually, you can get them around $40 if you order them online right now. Everywhere I've looked that you can find them, they're usually about $40. So they're not too crazy, they're not too expensive. It's nice to see. Uh, I think their retail is supposed to be 50 but everyone seems to be selling them at 40 so... Get them while you can before they might go up with uh, the actual release. Right, but you should keep in mind when we're talking about value and stuff, between 40 and 50 is what you're actually spending on these decks. So we can start off with the deck that we think is the weakest, which is Divine Convocation. This is a deck led by Kazla, the Broken Halo. She's three blue, red, white for a 5-4 angel with Convoke. She's got Flying, Vigilance, and Haste. And whenever you cast another spell that has Convoke, you scry two, then draw a card. So it's actually a pretty sweet payoff for convoking things i think obviously the problem we're going to get to is convoke sucks yeah um there's a lot of good new convoke cards and in this deck there are good new convoke cards so that's all fine dandy and works well the like bz said the main issue is convoke is something they've played safe with for years and then only now does it seem they're really testing the waters and putting in good stuff so this card just suffers because your average card quality is very low i just look at this deck list uh you go over it and you see just how bad the average card is that has Convoke. And then when you want to go back through Magic's history and add the best cards to Convoke, it's like, there really isn't much there. The, 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 yeah, exactly. It's very, very shallow pool of cards. Like, it, there's the, the top, like, eh, 10 or like 10, 15 cards really good, and then they fall off so fast. So it's not like Wizards screwed up with this deck. It's just that Convoke Agreed. is a really weak mechanic overall. They could easily support it down the road, and this deck will get better, but right now it's kind of weak. Yeah, I would actually say that this deck is actually well-designed and well-made. It's just su- the main issue with it is simply Convoke sucks. So let's go to the first little category here, best reprints from the set. Okay, there's some awesome ones, especially this first one uh, from a money standpoint. Elspeth, Sun's Champion, $13 before the reprint. She's always been worth money. She's an awesome card, and it's she just needed the reprint. Yeah, she's not bad. She's totally playable, especially at pre-con level. Like, I wouldn't recommend it, you know, in the most high-power decks. But in pre-con, she'll do some work, so she's decent. And maybe you need it for another deck. Yes. Uh, Secure the Waste. This is its first reprint. Finally. It, I, it's weird. You would have thought this card would be reprinted uh, before. But no, it, this is literally the first time. It makes tokens. It's perfect for this deck. And it was 650 Awesome to see reprint. It's weird. The, it's weird to me that this card has not been reprinted in almost... Since I was 17. Since eight... Yeah, in almost eight years. But... For some reason, it still didn't get over $10. Right. Is, They're like, now is the time for this card. Yes, and that, uh, it is. It is the time. Yeah, Kite Card, Wind's Fury is 6 bucks. Starts slowly creeping up. It's just a good Spell Slinger card. Turns out also good for this deck because it makes little dudes that you can convoke. 
and sort of get uh, extra creature value out of. We also got Skull Clamp. We're looking to get this reprinted as much as possible. Super staple of the format. One of the best cards in the whole entire format. Give us more Skull Clamp. And Impact Tremors, which isn't uncommon, that just refuses to stay down in price. Back up to like $6. Thank you. Keep reprinting this card. It's such a good card. I want it to be a budget card, but it's not. It's just never been a budget card. It's printed in the dirt so that it's cost a dollar. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Time to get to the best new cards originally from this precon. The first one is Miss Meadow Vanisher. It's two in an Azorius hybrid for a 3 2. And then when it becomes tapped, you basically exile something until the end step. It can't be a non land. It can't be a land. It can't be a token. Those are the usual caveats with this stuff. So you get flicker bonus synergy. Yeah, it's really good in this deck because uh, it gives you some ETBs, which isn't the best part because what actually is good is it'll untap the creature that you're flickering so that you can evoke with it again on the next turn. Really sweet, really nice design. I love this card. Good callback too. Also using hybrid mana, which there's like none of in this whole set except for this card. Yeah, just a straight up callback. Pretty decent little iteration on Ms. Metal Witch. Yes. Uh, oh, we also have Nesting Dovehog, 3-3 three, three Flyer for 4 mana, and you populate at the beginning of combat, and you also get a plus one plus one counter on this whenever you make a token. So it's a nice little flying bird that just populates. Uh, it's going to be good for certain token decks. Flock Chaser Phantom is a 6 mana 5-5 five, five Vigi Flyer with Convoke, and then it gives the next spell you cast Convoke when you attack with it. Totally, like medium to me. I mean, it's still one of the better new cards, because there's only 10 new cards in each uh, pre-con, but I'm not, like, blown away. Yeah, this card's fine. I, I don't mind uh, this card at all. It's not bad. Also, he chases birds. He's a spirit that chases birds. It's totally distracting. And they, they well, it's hilarious, because they tried to make it sound, like, cool, the flock chaser phantom, but it's, like, guy who chases birds. Right. There's a multi-planar invasion going on. Can we maybe, like, focus <laughs> on what the task at hand is? No. Well, we're chasing birds. Wild Fire Awakener. This is X, generic mana, uh, red, white, and then it's, it's its own body, and then it makes spirits that, when they tap, deal damage to your opponents. So you're just going to want to, like, you know, convoke it out, because it has convoke. Uh, you get a bunch of tokens, then use all those tokens to convoke some more cards. And I want to bounce it back to my hand. Next is Wand of the World Soul. It is, like, weird manolith that they made enter tap for no reason, but the real, like, draw to it is you can give a spell convoke when you tap it. I still am not, like sold on this giving convoke thing like it's obviously fine it makes your creatures basically tap for mana for the turn yeah mana of the tapped very very bad card i don't think the ability is worth it but it's one of the cooler and more unique cards put into this why does not your tap there is no need for that yes and we have to go to budget ads now these are cards that you can put into the deck that work pretty freaking well first one is transcendent message it's only a rare from march of machines so i think it could slot in pretty easily x blue blue blue, blue. convoke draw x cards it's got convoke it's a big old gigantic card draw spell and it's going to shoot you ahead into the late game. It's exactly what this deck wants. Uh, almost every time they do these pre-cons, there's always a card or two from the actual set that these decks want. This is the one. This is exactly what you want to get. If you open one booster pack and you're uh, out of this for this deck, hope you draw this card because it's perfect. Yes, a card that I hear ruined M15 Limited. It's triplicate spirits and in Commander it sure does have Convoke. It's six mana for three spirits with Convoke. It is like so okay. I think you could Play it and fill out your convoke, meet your convoke requirements. So you can scry two, draw a card off this with uh, Kazlo. Yeah, reasonable card. It's not bad. It's not broken, but it's reasonable. Daring Thief. All right, we're going to convoke this thing because it's mm -hmm. a creature. And then when it untaps is when we're going to get our value. Because, it becomes inspired. Because, yes, obviously when it untaps, it becomes inspired. And then you get to exchange control of one of your derpy tokens for some real creature or some other thing. You anything, Two things that share a type, you exchange control of them. There's also Magda, Brazen Outlaw, when your dwarves become tapped you get treasures and then well great we are going to convoke them all so anything that we have that happens to be a dwarf including her is going to just make some treasures makes us even more man yeah it's just about magda right like I, we don't need any other dwarfs in the deck when she becomes tapped we get a treasure that's all we care about per for this deck she basically taps for two mana for our spells when we need them to that's pretty cool stony brook schoolmaster is very similar but it taps to and becomes tapped and makes a one one yeah uh, perfect. I mean, this thing literally makes more things to convoke every time it gets tapped. It's basically a mana dork. Those were all ads for like three or less dollars, but these are the non-budget ads. We're going to tell you how much these are. They're the, the big spendings. Yes, yeah, so if you want to put some money into this deck to really improve it, here you go. First one, we have Clever Concealment. $18. This is Convoke to protect your team. You phase out as any number of creatures you control. Perfect. This card is actually really, really good. Not sure why it was in last pre-cons and not this one as we have a convoke deck here. I love Intruder Alarm. $11. Classic busted card. This is one of the fairest ways I've ever seen to use it. Every spell you cast that makes a creature when you convoke all your dudes, well, the creatures enter and then you untap all your dudes. So like triplicate 
spirits is going to give you three untaps with intruder alarm. So you could potentially cast like three convoke instants back to back or like if you have mana dork store up mana it's really weird yeah, it's a ritual like it's weird like now you're now your stuff that makes creatures are rituals it is strange when you make multiple tokens you get multiple untapped it's quite a strange little card for this deck but it's really really good invasion a sokovia slash uh Katus Tyroid Server, you're going to make some guys to use for convoking. And then on your the backside, all your nine creature spells have convoke. So anything in your deck that didn't have convoke now has convoke. This is kind of what we want. We want to give good spells convoke and not play bad spells with convoke. So Castle's going to love this card. Yes, exactly. Because there's so many bad spells with convoke. And Grand Crescendo is just another copy to make X tokens. But this one protects your team when you cast it. And then when you give it convoke, all your creatures will just basically now double or triple the effect this spell has. As far as cutting cards in this deck, this is the worst deck, so there's the most to choose from, but we're still going to just pick five. Banisher Priest is awful. Uh, the only reason we're even playing Fiend Hunter is because we can respond to the trigger and cause some shenanigans, and Banisher Priest can't even target your own creatures. It's just like, is it's awful, and there's no reason to play it. Yeah, I agree. Banisher Priest is absolutely unplayable. Delu Deluxe Dragster is a new card from this deck. Doesn't fit with the theme of this deck at all. Doesn't do convoke things whatsoever. You can crew it, which kind of goes along with some of the things that want to get tapped, but it's just not that good of a card, so easy cut. Conclave Tribunal, this a bad card. card with convoke. Absolutely 100% unplayable garbage. Do not yeah. play O Rings and Commander. Yeah, we don't like O Rings. This one costs even more, assuming you don't have creatures. Chant of Vitu Gazi. Cherries, I don't even know what this card does. So, Busy, how much would you pay uh, if you wanted a fog with convoke? Two? How about eight? No. Eight mana. And then you gain the life that would be doubt. But it, no, still not even close. It's a fog. Get out of here. Flight of Equinox, equally insulting. It's an eight mana, four or five flyer with no abilities. And like, what am I supposed to do with this? This is the problem with this deck is that these cards are trash. Like actual factual trash and not playable. And I'm sure there's more in the deck that are like pretty subpar and I'm not excited about oh, there playing. Are. Oh, there's plenty of bad cards in this deck. All right, let's move on to the next deck, Growing Threat. And the face commander is Brimaz Blight of Orasco. Oh, they got our boy. Two white black for a 3-4. Whenever you cast a Phyrexian or artifact creature spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. And at the beginning of your end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. This is one of the weaker face commanders. We're not a big, we're not the biggest fans of like incubating in general. And this is like kind of all Bremez does. Yeah, it's, that is all he does. And then he starts proliferating. Eh. Yeah, this card is a pretty weak overall, but is Phyrexian Tribal. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. You're going to want to play a ton of artifact creatures and Phyrexians to go along with it. That's a nice little combination. The best reprints. There's some really cool reprints. Uh, specifically, I really like Ancient Stone Idol, which just for some reason was not getting reprinted. And it was crawling up in price. I don't think it was a card that good, but it was like 6 50? Yeah, uh, shout outs to, or it's a callback to Ancient or Stone Idol Trap from like forever ago. Yeah. It, and it is basically a trap, kind of cool. Fetid Heath is a nice land. I'll take infinite lands that cost anywhere more than $3. I would love a reprint for every dual land that exists. Yep. Uh, Kyron's Bastion getting a reprint. This was $5. This card just got reprinted recently. Still $5. I, I'm sure it will still be $5 because it, people love their proliferates. Yes, they do. Uh, and Massacre Worm. Okay, sweet card. Uh, really like to see this get reprinted. It's a Phyrexian. I don't like games, and, yeah. Yeah, and it actually does something. It's really good in this deck. I like Phyrexian Scriptures. It just blows up a lot of creatures. You could save your best one, and all your artifacts are also safe. So, like, we don't worry about Incubate Tokens going away. And then it's just a pretty playable card. It's like a weird black board wipe. Some decks want it. The best new cards started off with just an awesome removal spell, Excise the Imperfect. You exile an island permanent, they get to incubate where X is its mana value. I don't really care about that second part, which makes this card very appealing. Yeah, exactly. Um, this card is really, really good. It's just a great exile spell. doesn't really fit with the theme of what this deck's doing, but it is a great new card. Kind of staply. Yeah. Uh, something that does care about what this deck is doing is Volpine Harvester. It's just a fox, and then whenever you attack with Phyrexians, you can return artifacts from your graveyard to play. It's actually a Phyrexian fox. It is a Phyrexian fox. It's just a fox. <laughs> Filigree <laughs> Vector wants you to, to put counters on all your dudes. Or charge counters. You probably don't have that. You probably have counters. And you can proliferate, which is yep. exactly what we want in this deck. Yeah, exactly. Pretty pretty simple card. Really good. Bitterthorn. This is just uh, Sword of the Animus, but it's living. It's got living weapons, so it comes out and it's a body. Really cool card. And then Blight Titan. Wow, this was the fifth best card, huh? This is No, it wasn't. But I, I put it on here because Blight Titan sucks. and it's, it, might, it sucks even harder than Grave Titan, I think. It, I think it might be worse than Grave Titan, and Grave Titan sucks big butts. How about budget ads? For budget ads, we've got Norned Choir Master. Whenever you play your commander or you attack with your commander, you proliferate 
Perfect for this deck, and this thing's a Phyrexian, just perfect. Yeah, I like Viscerous here. Not a Phyrexian, but it's just a bread and butter sack ally that you're going to want when you have all these expendable dudes, and if you can't sacrifice them, you feel bad. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, it is important to just have a couple sack outlets, and this deck was lacking in that one. That's why I also added Blighted Processor, lets you sacrifice Phyrexians. Now you get your Phyrexians dying, this thing gets a little bigger, it incubates when it dies. Perfect, this works with what this deck wants to do, though not a great card. It is seemingly made for this deck. Progenitor Exarch is probably going to be a bulk rare from the new set, and it incubates a couple times. They're all incubate threes, and then you can tap it to save some mana and turn them face up. Yeah, you'll notice a lot of these cards that incubate that this, what this deck wants to do are from this set, obviously. Grafted Butcher is a lord for our Phyrexians, and then on top of that, you can return it from the graveyard. It's just, it's fine. It's not like a busted card, but it's what the deck wants to do. It's a really specific deck. It, hyper specific. Time for some non-budget ads. Elish Norn, the newest one, slash the Argent Etchings, $42. I don't know if that's going to hold or not, but we still kind of want it because we're going to incubate five times on the backside, and then if we get to the second chapter, that's all we need to win. It's an overrun. Yeah, this card, yeah, this card is, gonna, is exactly what the deck wants to do. Also, it uh, on the back, it flips all of our incubated. So if we built up a ton of incubated things, and then we flip Elish Norn, all right, well, we're going crazy. And then we get a board wipe, and I don't know how we don't win at that point. Yeah, uh, Mondrick Glorious Dom Glory Dominus. Uh, this is going to double the tokens we're making, and it's a Phyrexian, so it's just the creature type we want. 25 bucks. Let's stick with the white legendary Phyrexian cards. Elish Norn Grand Son of Lights, 35 bucks. This is a staple of the format. Pumps our dudes, shrinks our dudes. How do we not play this card in this deck? Yeah, it, it literally lines up perfectly with what we want to do. Astronaut's Altar. Okay. Y you can sacrifice a Phyrexian, get two mana, so now you can incubate to flip something over, and you've caused a Phyrexian dice, so now you can proliferate. Just chef's kiss for this that deck. That feels pretty good. That, that's a nice little include. Uh, Warp Coil Engine. Phyrexian creates two Phyrexians, 14 bucks, six mana, lifelink. All right. I mean, as far as Phyrexians go, there's not that many good ones. Got, there's just not that many. We got the good Phyrexians. This is also an artifact creature, so if it wasn't a Phyrexian, it would still be decent in this deck. How about cuts? We got to cut some cards. Oh, uh, yeah. So first, we cut. Sh I cut Shiremir. Uh, this wasn't really an artifact deck. I mean, it was like half, half artifact, half Phyrexian. I moved toward Phyrexian, and at 30 artifacts, I wasn't interested in Shiremir. Yeah, Scytheclaw. I hate Scytheclaw. I don't really think a lot of the living weapons are good enough to justify playing, even though the germ is Phyrexian. Yeah, bad, 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 bad. Poop, 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 poop. Oh, go for the throw. We don't play murders. We just don't do that. Yeah, uh, go for the throw is just not very good. Um, and Blade Splicer, I never thought this card was even close to good enough for Commander. I could not be <sighs> so cool. further from wanting to play this card. Blade Splicer is so cool. Phyrexian Gargantua, also so cool. These are like limited cards, or maybe Commander Cubes type, type cards. Drawing two is just not worth six mana, I can't. No, no. We I left in Phyrexian Rager because I think it's playable in this deck. It's close, yeah. It cycles more quickly. This is just, like, not cyclable. Yeah, bad. It's time for the third precon, the middle precon. This is Call for Backup, helmed by Bright Palm, Soul Awakener. One red, white, green for a 4-3 with backup one, and the ability is whenever this creature attacks, double the number of counters on target creature. That creature can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. Kind of weird. So you want, like... It's counters, and then we're, like, giving some evasion. And that's pretty cool. But I wanted to know about who is Bright Palm. Is Bright Palm Light Paws? I don't. Because it's, like, the no. same thing. It's, like, the same meaning. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe we're going to. both foxes? We'll find out during Ranking Every Commander for sure. Yeah, we probably will. Yeah, I don't know who this is. Uh, maybe Bright Palm, Light Paws, whatever. Anyway, this is, like, plus one, plus one counters, Plus right? one, plus one counters, flicker sort of stuff. That's really what we're, this deck is. One really, really good reprint for this deck. And that's it, because the rest is really kind of stink. Colonian Hydra was $18. Awesome. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome reprint. Can we just get, like, this level of reprints all the time instead of Flame Shatter Conjuring, which nobody cares about? Eh, it's one of the better versions of this effect that I don't ever play. Uh, Stratic Resonator, that's a good one, because I want to be able to play that in budget and copy cool trigger and activated abilities. Yeah, this is $3 as well. Same with Flame Shadow Conjuring. Gavany Township, I've been getting reprints in pre-cons. $2.50. Yeah, it, it, it's just a very, very good card. It's really good. And Semester's End, just a nice way to protect your team and have them come back with counters. Plus, they'll re-ETB with their backup abilities. Yeah, best new cards. We really like Guardian Scale Lord. It's the 5-mana 3-4 backup one flying. And then your creature that attacks, whether it be this or the thing you backed up, can reanimate a non-land permanent mana value to the, its power. So you can do that right away, and then this thing just has that ability 
pretty sweet card. Yeah, this card's awesome. I'm a big, big fan, especially when you're going to be buffing its power in this deck, which this deck is going to be doing. Emergent Worm kind of sucks, but it's just it's a card here. It Basically, you can cheat something into play from your deck. It's whatever. Conclave Sledge Captain. That's weird. This card is funny. Triple back up one, back up one, back up one, and then the ability for whenever it deals damage, you get that many counters onto that creature. Really, really cool, unique card. Not broken or busted, but definitely cool. I think it just creates so many so many counters and I want to give double strike so bad. Uh, Mirror Style Master like creates token copies of your modified things so in this deck you're going to get like a ton of them. Yeah, this is basically, this deck is a pseudo modified deck of, uh, basically focusing on the plus one plus one counter side so uh, whatever it uh, backs up will always be modified so it will at least copy itself. And then Civil Unrest can either give uh, gives all your non-token creatures Riot, so that they'll either have plus one, plus one counters or haste. If they have haste, obviously they can attack right away. If they have plus one, plus one counters, then they will be dealing double damage. Time for budget ads. You remember Agris Cost, like the seventh version of this card from Jumpstart? Probably not, but you can target him with something, and then you can kind of replicate it across all your creatures. Yes. So you can replicate backups with this card, which is what makes it super mm. good. Uh, most of these kind of effects only really copy... Uh, usually only copy spells. This is copying abilities, which makes this card really awesome for this deck. You can copy an ability like Halana Alenas, which is insane to copy. You put uh, whatever its power is, you put that many plus one, plus one counters at combat at combat on something else. Copy with Aegis Cost is going to be really, really sweet. And then you just, so you're going to be backing up onto this and then putting more counters onto even more things. Plus it could taste. And we have Kazul's Fury to sacrifice our creatures when they get really, really big. But it's a land most of the time when we don't need to do that. Because this feels amazing. Yeah. I mean, we MDFCs are good. Who would have thought? Not us. The picky nerds never say that. Uh, more budget ads. We got Harden Scales. This card's under $3. I think it's right around $3. Finally. Very, very good magic card. Get it in this deck. It's perfect. Emil the Blessed will continuously re-trigger backups by flickering the same creatures over and over. So you can, like, use your, emergent, uh, your Scare Lord to just, like... Bring your whole graveyard back if you just target all your other creatures. Exactly. It's just it's a way to flicker for our backup plan, which is backup. Our backup plan. That's, I, that should have been the deck's name. Backup plan? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. What was the name? Like, plus one counter deck? Call for backup? Ours is way better. Yeah, backup plan's a way better name. Good. Come on, Wizards. Get good. All right, time for some of them non-budget ads. So we got a couple of expensive of uh, counter doublers and uh, higher and scales effect. First, branching evolution, $25. Amazing. Doubles all the counters you're going to be putting on your team. Perfect. That's what this deck does. Benevolent Hydra is a Hydra that comes out with counters on it and can move those counters and has the hardened scales text to put extra counters. This card's really good. Yeah, uh, Embercleave, just a big, gigantic swing. If you make a big creature with counters or what, uh, what have you, slam this on there. It'll be surprising. They won't know it's coming, and they'll just take like 30 damage. Yeah, exactly. We're going super big while going semi-wide, so this card's not going to cost a lot to play, and then our big, giant creature's just going to trample over and win us the game. Damning Verdict is $6.00. Destroy all creatures without counters on them. Hopefully, our whole team will have counters on them. Yeah, Kodama of the West Tree. This is the modified uh, matters. Kodama comes down early, and then as long as you have little creatures like with backup that are just kind of getting incidental counters, you're just going to start ramping. You only need to get one land off this before I feel pretty good because it has other text on it. It has other text. It gives your whole team trample. Yeah, it wow. just does everything. What a great card. Dusk Legion Duelist. Remember, uh, this is $5. Remember when I mentioned that every single one of these decks has a card from the set that uh, original set that wants it? This is it. Dusk Legion Duelist. Remember, our counter is put on it. Draw a card. Only do this once a turn. Yeah, we're going to cut some cards, too, and we're going to cut Temple of the False God pretty much every time we see it because I think it's basically a trap, and we're not fans of it. It's bad. I, th I think it's bad. Uh, I want to go back. There was an article a while back that explored this. I want to explore it again. I wanna, I'm want. i going to see if I can get in touch with Frank Karsten. I would love for Frank Karsten to run the math on this card because it's not good. <laughs> it's not, not favorable math. How about Falcon Wrath Exterminator? Isn't this the one, if I'm not mistaken, that just, like, pings? Like it's a two-mana one-one? Sorry, it's actually worse than that because you can't ping before it gets counters on it. Yeah, the card is poop. The card is poop. This Soup. is just a draft card. Why is this here? Why is this here? High Sentinel can like put counters on stuff, and it, no, this card is bad. That's this card was unbeatable in draft. Because I don't know what to talk about it for Commander, because we don't play with this card. I would never play this card in Commander, because this card is poop in Commander. Yeah, we'll give you the draft history. Hinder Vines, I, that sounds like a fog to me. Yeah, it's exactly fog, except for your plus one, plus one counters, creatures deal damage. g g g garbo <laughs> We're not, We don't even need to give a ton of reasons why these like draft chaff commons and rares are not great. Yeah, I mean, this card is horrendous. What's next? What's uh, Ion Storm? Remove a charge counter or a plus one, plus one counter, shock something. 
no, this rate is terrible. We're paying one in a red. This is like maybe if it was just remove the counter and there wasn't a cost to it. But no, there is a cost. Therefore, this carrier is bad. Yeah, and during skill order, can pick up some counters, and it cares about when you put counters. But it's really expensive. I just don't think this card. They love putting this in free cons, and I've never been a fan of it. No, I think this card's really bad in commander. Maybe, maybe on a budget like super uh, tight budget. No. Yeah. Nah. So this deck has some pretty banger reprints and some decent stuff going on, and then there's just like really, there's some really bad cards. Let's in be it. clear. It has one banger like, reprint. That's good. It's a really, that's a really good reprint. But like these are. As good as that reprint is, these cards are that bad. Yeah, these th th this this deck is a really is really rough around the edges. All right, we got Tinker Time. This is the second best of these decks. It's not too shabby. I actually like this one a lot. And this one is led by Gimbal Gremlin Prodigy. I got there eventually. Two green, white, nope. Two green, blue, red. I'm just going to stumble through this card. Legendary creature, Gremlin Artificer, 4-4. Four, four. Artifact creatures you control have trample at the beginning of your end step. Create a 0-0 zero, zero red Gremlin Artifact creature token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens you control. It wants artifact tokens, and it makes... Robot Gremlins. It makes it it do, and it makes its own artifact. So like the next turn after you've gotten one of these, you, it'll always be one bigger because now you have this weird artifact Gremlin thingy. Let's go to the reprints. Now these are not great. These reprints are a little lacking. Tireless Tracker at five bucks is the best one. Yeah, um, the, the, like you said, this is a little weak on the thing. But Tireless Tracker is not actually a bad reprint. Like I would have, it's I, a fine I, card. I will take it. But being the best reprint is the rough part. Uh, Tireless Tracker is a good card for Commander, super solid, and it makes clues, which we want uniquely named artifact tokens. That's perfect. A Canary Manufacturer, perfect for this deck. If you make a clue, treasure, or a food, instead you make all three. Perfect. Three fifty, great reprint. Yeah, Spell Swindle functions as a counter spell while also giving you treasures. Really overcosted, but it was three dollars, which is kind of surprising. I actually imagined it was more, and now it's down to three dollars. Yeah, uh, Curse of Opulence was way up like uh, a couple months ago, uh, before it got its first reprint, and now that it's been reprinted, it's down to three dollars. It's really perfect for this deck, though, um, because it makes gold. Nothing makes gold, and, no and gold is functionally treasure, except for you don't have to tap it. All right, but it's actually really good here because we want both a gold and a treasure in this deck. Yeah, there's like three magic cards I can think of that I've ever seen in play in Commander that make gold, so this is a nice one to have. Yeah, uh, one of them is the King Midas Destruction. Yeah, there's the green, the green Saga also will make a gold. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though it, that goes against the other thing that says they didn't There's compete. no prizes for the Akron games. There's no there's no prizes for the Akron games. Here's a gold. Here's a gold. <laughs> Separate. This is unrelated. Uh, Bloodforge Battle Axe. Two bucks now. This thing was, like, way up there. I remember people loved this card. I think it even got reprinted before this, and I'm glad to just get it reprinted because apparently it's a card that's just going to keep going up. It's really cool. It's just a, such a cool card. Neat nice, design. Nice reprint. All right, let's talk about some of the best new cards in this deck. Dance with Calamity. Oh, boy, we're playing Blackjack. If we go over 13, we get nothing. If we stay under 13 for mana value, we get to cast them all for free. Love this card. Is it good? No. Is it fun? Oh, yeah. One of the funnest cards I've ever seen. Hedron Detonator makes your artifacts entering ping an opponent, which is fine. And then you can sacrifice two artifacts to impulse draw. This isn't a card I'm, like, going out of my way for, but it's totally fun and, and fine in this deck. Yeah, I mean, I would just I I would just replace this on average with Reckless Fire Weaver or Ingenious Artillerist. So those cards are just better, but whatever, it's here. Uh, we have Rashmi and Ragavan. Super awesome. Whenever you cast your first spell, you exile target, uh, the top card of target opponent's library, and then if you have uh, enough treasures, you can play for free. Or artifacts, rather, not even just treasures. This card is super cool, super fun. I love it. Uh, it's not that good in the in this Grimly deck, but it's totally such a cool card. Grimly? Grimly, yeah, whatever. Oh, Gimbal. Yeah, there's, there's no other way for me to mention this, but if you're looking for deep cut elf quotes, this guy just makes me think of the two, uh, I don't even know what they're like, security officers when Buddy is like wandering around, like, why don't you go back to Gimbal's? Okay, you're gonna go back to Sandland. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go back to Gimbal's? That's this guy's Does story. anybody remember that? I'll try and put it on screen, but does anyone remember that? Let me know if you remember the quote. Why don't you go back to Gimbal's? I'll see if it's on YouTube. Uh, I, most quotes are on YouTube, but that's really... That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Oh, we gotta keep going. How about Cutthroat Negotiator? What does that do? Uh, it, it parlays. Uh, whenever you attack with this silly thing, it's a 4-3 uh, parlay. Everyone reveals, and for each non-land, you get a treasure, and everyone draws, because that's parlay, baby. I would love a treasure. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Schema Thief is the uh, flying 3-3. When it hits, you can copy an artifact that that player controls. 
fine card. Uh, interesting in this deck for sure. We, we're never going to be able to get the name. Like those named tokens, we're never going to have a name of that. So yeah. it's brand new every time. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to have many Soul Ring tokens. I don't really make those. Time for some budget ads. And I'm going to start with Red Sun's Twilight. It's not only functional artifact removal that scales. But if you get up to that X, you just get a bunch of tokens that do things. Yeah, exactly. And these tokens will go away eventually. But the really cool thing about it is after uh, we make the gremlin, the gremlin comes down. The gremlin's nice and big. Okay, sweet. We have this giant gremlin. All right, now those things are gone afterward. But we had more names, so now our gremlin's like a huge beastly bulky boy. Thanks, Gimbal. Gim thank you, Gimbal. Uh, Svella, Ice Shaper. Love Svella. She makes... Icy Manolith, that is a unique name. That I, is one of one. It is the only thing that makes Icy Manolith in the whole world. Speaking of one of one tokens, Togo Goblin Weaponsmith makes rocks. Yep. Only thing in the whole format that makes rocks. Play a land, get a rock. Since we're making so many tokens, I love Idol of Oblivion. It's just basically draw a card every turn, including the turn you come out. it comes out, which is super important. And then another one of my favorites, Sicarian Infiltrator. I've been loving this card, and I kind of have playing, been playing it a lot. It uh, basically has, it has a squad, so you copy it and make tokens every time you pay the squad cost. So if you pay five, you get like a Muldrifter, you get two one-twos, you draw two cards, and now you have a token named Sicarian Infiltrator, which is brand new, guaranteed you don't have another one. Let's do those non-budget ads. So you want to spend a little bit of money? How about we get Kibo Utabi Prince? Now, you might be saying, what? What does this thing do? Makes a banana token. Come on now, where else are you going to get a banana token? Is that a food? No, it's a banana. It's unique. It's different. It's a type of food. Uh, Urza, Lord High Artificer. Every token we just named is an artifact, so they're all going to tap for blue. And then you can spin your wheels with all this extra stuff you're getting and just start casting spells for free and it, just a, a mountain of value. Oh, yeah. Urza is so... It's just it's one of the best cards in the artifact decks, and this is an artifact deck, believe it or not. Fairy Artisans, $14. But did you know... Fairy Artisans keeps making tokens of anything that enters the battlefield. You're not going to have whatever the last thing your opponent is. Yeah, they play, even if it's Solemn Similar Crumb. I don't have Solemn Similar Crumb token. Okay, cool. I'll take Solemn Similar Crumb token to add up to my total. Right. We're fine that we only end up with one at any given moment. We just keep getting all the ETPs and all the abilities that just happen to be static and triggered from the stuff our opponents do. Uh, now, this next one is really boring, but it actually is synergistic with the deck. I would never add this to the to a normal like commander deck unless it had synergy, or I mean, a normal upgrade. Like, I would never put this because who cares? Dockside Extortion is actually a really good ad for this deck. $65, but it really fits with what this deck is trying to do. Yeah, I really think the best red card in Commander would be good in this deck. I also think Retrofitter Foundry, a card that makes three different types of tokens at different varying mana costs and rates at 16 bucks, also pretty sweet. Yeah, perfect for this deck. Alright, let's cut some cards. Everquill Phoenix, it does make a unique token, but the card's bad. The card is absolutely horrendous. We need the card to do something. So absolutely 100% get that out of like here. Like four mana for a feather token? Is that really what I want to do? No. Vidokin Humiliator, another horrible card. Why do I want to make all my opponent's creatures into I've one? I've always hated this card. Into one. Yeah, I don't understand it. I just, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. It's very, very bad. Actually, all these cards on here are really bad. Aid from the Cowl, I think is one of the most boring rares ever printed. I get that it does something. And maybe some people think it's flashy. But to me... One of the most boring cards ever. Not even a guarantee you're going to get anything. Yes. If nothing leaves your battlefield, you literally get nothing from this card, which is horrendous. This oh, I mean, even if you flip it, you might get nothing. That's true. Even if you trigger it consistently, you might miss. That's not good. I mean, you'll probably hit, but it doesn't matter. Root Out and Crack Open both destroy artifacts or enchantments. Okay, and then you get uh, one of the a things. treasure or a clue. Treasure or a clue. This would be pseudo playable for an instant. These are sorceries. They're really slow. They're really slow. They're too expensive. I get it. I they they're synergistic. They're just very bad. Overall, deck's pretty cool. I like trying to make unique token names. I think that is a really sweet deck idea. The, the reprint value is bringing it down. It def for sure. Like, yikes! Yeah. Let's well, go to the best deck. Yes, the very best deck. It is Cavalry Charge. This is a Knights deck. Esper. Knights, the face commander is Zadar Jabari of Zalfir. And you might know this card because Zadar Jabari is actually a returning legend uh, from his old crappy days to actual good card. Really? What did he do? We've reviewed that card at some point in Ranking <laughs> Every Commander, and I totally forgot about it. It's probably ranked like 1,300 on the list. It's terrible. Go it, find it and tell us where it, it is. It like taps down stuff, has flanking. I mean, it's a really bad card. I mean, the card is terrible. But the new one, really, really good. This is one in an Esper for a 4-3. It's got Eminence, which means once in the command zone. Or if it's on the battlefield, you do this. Whenever you attack with at least one knight, you get to draw a card. 
Then discard a card. It's got flying. It's got first strike. Nice abilities. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return target knight card from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is an awesome design. I, I mean, Eminence is already like busted in the sense that it, it breaks the rules. You're going to get loots guaranteed all throughout the game. For free. Like, for absolutely nothing. And this commander, what I really, really like about this Eminence design... It encourages you to play it. It wants you to play it. It's like, it actually... Its best ability is the fact that it can be on the battlefield and get back knights. It's... I love the synergy with this card. I love mm -hmm. that when you attack with it, you draw this card, then you can just hit, get back that knight. Oh, card is awesome. Card is it's such... basically a home run. I think this is a perfect design. Knight Tribal, finally, uh, like... Uh, like really coming together here. I think that this is like they built they built it up like in Dominar United and we've seen or in Brothers War, but now we just it kind of comes together into one whole deck and I love it. And this, I wasn't expecting the reprints to just be hot fire because knights bleh, not the most high demand thing, but Hero of Bladehold 16 bucks. I don't think the card is broken or anything, but I think this reprinted $16 card that there is obviously demand for is good. Yeah, I mean this card it's 100% 10 out of 10 reprint. I want to see things like Hero of Bladehold Played hold all the time. I love it. Vanquisher's Banner. It's perfect. Chef's Kiss. Such a perfect reprint. We're going to cast Knights. We're going to draw cards. And it's going to pump our team. We need to see more of these cards because this is a sought after. Uh, it's the sought after card from Mixalot. Tri tribal card. It's a sought after tribal card. Tribal, tribes. Uh, what, what, what tends to make tribal cards so expensive is the fact that there's like a hundred different tribes that people love. So it like, fits in anything. So it fits in any one of those. Vanquisher Banner is awesome. Adeline basically fits in any deck that wants to make tokens. She's off the charts really good. You don't need to attack with her. You just need to attack. So you get like three tokens right away. And then again, every turn. And she's also ginormous. So 10 bucks. That's a that's down from her price, I think, of 10 or, or 12 or 15 from before. She's also a knight. So. She's also a knight. So why not just be a knight? Uh, Herald's Horn. Okay. Sea Vanquisher's Banner. Sea Vanquisher's Banner. What did I say about it? $8 reprint. Very nice. And Knight Exemplar, $6. This is like this is like one of those really cool payoffs, but Knights was never supported. And it's now it's like, hey, your Knights are supported now. This card is now good. This is also a card that if it wasn't reprinted, uh, it gets like... It gets a bonus because if it wasn't reprinted, you know it would just explode in value. Oh, like yeah. It would just be 20 bucks. Good good call on the reprint. Good job, Wizards. Heads up, move. Let's go to best new cards. And I'm thinking Herald of the Hoofbeats because your stuff just can't be blocked. Just super flying. Yeah, exactly. Give your whole team super flying. Uh, here's a question. Uh, Sid uh, Sidar Jabari of Zalfir has flying and rides on top of a griffin, it appears. Mm -hmm. What is going... So let's give it horsemanship. How does that work? Does the griffin then ride the horse? I think so. Or does it like pick it up in its talons and somehow that makes it unblockable? Or does it no longer matter that it has flying and it gets off the griffin and goes on a horse? It is being on the horse better like than being on the griffin. Which, I would think griffin all day. I, like, yeah, if you said you can ride a griffin, griffin in the battle. Ship. It's a, you can ride a griffin in the battle or you can ride a horse in the battle. I'm taking griffin if I if I can equally control both. Oh, it would be a griffinmanship. Griffinmanship. Uh, griffin... Are better than horses, but not it, not canonically in Magic. Though. How about Lockthwain Lancer? <laughs> Lockthwain Lancer is a five uh, five mana five five with menace, and whenever a knight you control dies, your opponents lose a life, and you draw a card. Perfect. Oh. Voldarian Wave Knight. This is just <laughs> like this card just has so many things going on, and it works for Merfolk too. But you just Gavany Township your team whenever you draw a card, which is very easy to do in Magic. It, it's so awesome. I mean, you draw every turn, so that's the minimum this thing ever does. And anytime you uh, you end up drawing like two or three cards, you have a Vanquisher's Banner out, cast two knights. Oh, okay, I'll double Gavany Township my whole team. Wave Knight is one of the like marquee cards, and I'm glad that they made a lot of the blue cards super uh, desirable because blue knights that's not a thing. That was like two cards in Eldraine, and now yeah, we don't have blue knights. Yeah, blue knights were not a thing. Chivalric. Alliance, a uh, pretty good card. Whenever you attack with two creatures, draw a card that you can discard to make knights, which is actually a huge upside in this deck because we care about that creature type. We also care about reanimating so you can cheat a big creature in the graveyard. Yes. And then another way to draw a card, Conjurer's Mantle. This is going to be great for any tribal deck with a high count in your tribe. You attack with whatever the tribe is. You look at the top six, get something from the tribe, put it in your hand. Time for budget ads. And I'm thinking Cavalier of Night and I guess by proxy, the all, all the Cavaliers really, Cavalier of Night can like Bone Spoon or something. And then when it dies, you get back a creature to the battlefield and then you can use like Sadar to get back the Cavalier later. Yeah, all the Cavaliers, uh, specifically put Knight here because I think it's one of the best ones for this deck. 
just our night. So being a night for, I mean, this one is Cavalier. I would like to point out that on the script, Joe wrote <laughs> Cavalier of Night with a K. Yeah, I didn't do it on purpose, but I certainly did do it. Uh, I wonder why that is. Could it be because we're working on a night deck? Guardian of Faith, a card I'm not super high on. It's a knight, though. So it comes in and it can just protect your team from potentially board wipes or spot removal, stuff like that. Dolly's Lancers, you totally forgot it was a knight. Don't lie to me. Go tutor up any legend and be happy about it. Yep, exactly. Just tutor. There's some sweet legends in this deck that came with the deck. Just go and get them. Patriarch's Bidding. I don't know why this one wasn't in the deck. This deck already has a theme of discarding. Draw, discard, put knights into our it's graveyard. so out of control in this deck. So we're just going to go ahead and name knight and return all of them back from the graveyard to the battlefield. And yeah, I know you're thinking, but Sadar already returns them. Yeah, but then what happens when the actual board wave comes along? And it's like, oh, I have nothing. All right. He doesn't return bidding. them all at once. Deck with five knights over the course of the game. You're throwing five things in the graveyard, and now you can just bring them all back. Yeah, the pitcher is really good in this deck. And everyone played just another way to draw cards when our knights die. We get knights. And it gets a little power boost. I like that it just gives plus three. Yeah, I mean, that's true. It is a big boost. Non-budget ads? Oh, yeah, there's some sweet ones. Kins, Bail, Cavalier. All right, all of our knights getting double strike, baby. This little Kithkin that I don't know what he's doing. He's like, yeah! I don't. I literally don't know what he's doing, but I know he's saying, yeah. I think there's, if I'm remembering this art right, I don't want to even look. I don't think there's anyone else there. It's weird. It's just like, what are you, go, what are you uh, charging at? Yeah, yeah, it's a really weird... I I, I think you are thinking of the right art, but I don't I don't even know what this guy's doing. It looks like he's got like, little arms. He's like, yeah! What are you showing off for? <laughs> uh, let's go to Evasion of New Phyrexia. You make X knights. So you just pour all your mana into knights, and then if you have payoffs like the wave uh, knight thing that plus one, plus one counters them all, the game's probably over. Yeah, exactly. Invasion of New Phyrexia is made for the stuck. I mean, not that we care about Teferi on the back, but we can get him Sorry, sorry Teferi. Yeah, he, he doesn't really work with this deck. Though he well, does... he actually gives an emblem that gives knights plus one, plus up. So weird, but whatever. But Teferi's there. Why Teferi does not interact with knights until today. Uh, Battle Angels of the Tier, you forgot this was a knight too. I actually did. I don't think this card's that good. It's like $14, but I think when it's a knight, it's way better. It was very disappointing. Throw in a tribal payoff, and now I'm back in. I'm back in, baby. And Coat of Arms, we make a bunch of knights. They all get huge. This works for any tribe deck, any creature type you want. 18 bucks for this one. Yes. Uh, and probably the best card to add to this deck, Kindred Discovery. So good. Whenever a knight enters the battlefield, draw a card. Maybe attack with knight, draw a card. If you have this and the Wave Rider out, G. G. I mean, this card is good in most tribal decks, but it's better in the decks where you can just start spewing out tokens for, that don't really have mana resource investment. So you can make like four knights with one card, and all of a sudden you're just drawing four cards. How about the bad cards in this deck? I mean, I know one of them is Temple of the False God, so get that out of there. Yeah, what let's, else? Let's make cuts. So we got we to cut cards from this deck. So what are we cutting? Put the False Gods out. Arvid the Curse, this is not a Legends Matter deck, so I don't know what this card was thinking, sneaking into this deck list. Yeah, it read, is a knight, technically. Read the Bones, nice try. At least play Painful Truths, come on. Yeah, uh, read the Bones, sorry. Not not good enough for any commander deck, let alone any commander deck. Let alone one with cards in it. <laughs> Wintermore Commander? No. What the heck? This is such a bad knight. It's like, it's it's toughness is pumped by knights. Couldn't who, even give us power. Who cares? This card is butt soup. Yeah, uh, Xerex Strobe Knight? This is like the Windrake, right? This, this card is so weird. It's just, it's a knight that has vigilance and then it can tap to make new knights if you cast two spells. Okay, first thing I want to say, this reference is a plane that we've never seen and is really cool. And it's not even on a battle. It's it's not on a battle. It's just hanging out. It's like it's like this reality warping plane that said, this card is butts. <laughs> and Knight of the Last Breath. I don't know what Knight <laughs> of the Last Breath does. It's a seven mana, four, four knight. Oh, with... the Afterlife 3? Yes! Woo! <laughs> Wow, get it out. Please it's leave. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. This is the third video in our little series that we do for every single set. This one's for mom. So why don't you go check out one of the other two videos, whichever one BZ put over there. What you put over there, BZ? I don't know, but you should pick up this deck because it's easily the best one out of five. I think I put up the set review. Thank you, you very much. You did. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.